Good morning, everyone. On behalf of Vitiva Capital and our media partners at Frontier Africa Reports, I would like to welcome you all to the Wednesday edition of our breakfast meeting. It is the 17th of March, 2021. On our agenda today, our junior economist, Ibu Kung, will be talking about the country's latest inflation numbers, after which we will move to our fixed income and equities traders for their own updates and outlook, followed by, and we will round up with Temple Asaju from Frontier Africa Reports for their Pan-African updates. Before we move on to this, please note that this meeting is being recorded and may be shared with third parties. It is also being broadcast live on Facebook. This meeting is set to last for 30 minutes, inclusive of Q&A. If you do have a question, you'll be allowed to ask after all speakers are done. And, you, and to do this, you can either raise your hand on the Zoom app and you'll be allowed to speak, or you may use the comment function. And this is the same for those joining us on Facebook. So without further ado, we will now start off with Ibuku for the country's latest inflation numbers. Good morning, Ibuku. Good morning, Dozi, and good morning, everyone. So yesterday, the MBS confirmed that um, Nigeria's inflation has reached a four-year high of 17.33%. This is, of course, on the back of the lingering pandemic disruptions that we have faced in the recent past, including energy and currency reforms. On a year-on-year -year basis, the Naira is weaker at all windows, while PMS prices are also higher. So these have contributed to the surge in food inflation, which also has its own supply side issues. And as a result, it has risen to an all time high of 21.79%. The, the cost segment, which captures the non food segment, also witnessed a further rise to 12.38% due to higher energy prices. So, going forward, we remain bearish on inflation in the month of March as we expect the dual shocks from the food blockade and the fair price hike to actually trickle into commodity prices. We recall the food blockade that was declared by the Northern Union of um, Foodstuffs and Castle Dealers on the Southern region of, of the country. Although it lasted for just six days, but it, it could have had severe implications for food inflation, if not for prompt intervention by relevant authorities. Also, the proposed hike in PMS prices would have also left a similar imprint on food inflation if the NPC had not maintained its stance on keeping the prices fixed. So despite the prompt intervention in both situations, we expect food inflation to rise to 22.84% and core inflation to rise to 12.7% in the month of March. Meanwhile, we expect the headline figure to come in, and come in at 18.01%. Um, so we expect inflation to trend higher next this month. Thank you very much, Dozi. Thank you very much, Ibukun. We will now move to Emmanuel for the equity space. Good morning, Emmanuel. Uh, good morning, Dozi, and uh, good morning, everybody. So again, I'll start off with the West African regions they were uh, saw uh, indices are uh, closing in the green. Uh, starting off with the GSC, which led the order again as uh, yesterday session, the Ghana Stock Exchange posted a gain of 54 basis points, and that pushed it uh, yet to date return uh, further in the green to positive 14.69 percent. And uh, the index has uh, constantly and consistently outperformed its pairs. Uh, the Nigerian Stock Exchange again yesterday uh, halted its uh, bearish run. Uh, closing yesterday's session for 21 basis for 21 basis points up, and uh, as a result, it's yet to did return uh, moderated to negative 3.85 percent. While the BRVM stock exchange posted a marginal gain of nine basis points, and that kept its yet to did uh, return uh, still in the negative region at negative 4.6962 percent. Uh, for the Nigerian equities market, yeah, we saw uh, the large cap stocks coming to the rescue of the index yesterday. Uh, the two most capitalized stocks, talking about Dangsem and MTN, uh, saved the domestic boss from another negative close. Uh, 
uh, earlier in the session, Dang Sem, uh, I mean, uh, posted a gain of uh, 355 basis points and he was able to maintain the upward movement throughout uh, yesterday's session. He, he closed uh, higher at uh, 227 naira 80 kobo as against uh, the 220 naira he opened in the previous session. And uh, during the day as well, we saw MTN climb being 120 basis points it, uh, to close uh, in the green as well. Uh, he closed at 159 naira 19 kobo uh, compared to the one. 58 naira it opened in the it opened in the previous session. So these two stocks are uh, were the major drivers of uh, of uh, yesterday's uh, session. If not, the market could have could have uh, set to yesterday's session again in the in the red. Uh, we saw declines in the financial space yesterday. Financial sectors talking about the banking and the insurance sectors. Uh, the banking sector was the most hit, uh, uh, declining 3.51 percent day on day. And this came on the back of significant declines in uh, a number of T1 banking stocks. Uh, we saw guarantee closing 484 basis points down in yesterday's session to close at uh, it uh, to close at 20 naira 50 kobo in yesterday's uh, session. And uh, following guarantee, we also saw declines in ETI, Zenith Bank, Wema, UBA, FBNH, and uh, some other stocks in that in that in that region. So on the back of that, uh, the banking sector. Uh, declined 3.51 percent day on day, and that pushed it again uh, to the worst performing sector uh, yet to date, uh, with the sector declining 14.03 percent year on year. Uh, yet to date, part of me. And uh, we mentioned already uh, about that there's nothing peculiar to this sector. It's just the it's just the general market sentiment in the market at the moment. And uh, being the most liquid sector, when uh, uh, things are going south. Uh, you expect the banking sector to be the uh, to, to to be one of the ones that will be largely affected, and that is what we are seeing at the moment. Uh, that is why the uh, sector is uh, currently out underperforming other sectors, uh, posting a loss of 14.03 percent year to date. Uh, also, like I said, the financial space generally, the insurance sector also lost uh, 1.07 percent. Uh, yesterday, but uh, due to gains recorded in the beginning of the year, the beginning of the year, uh, we're still we're still seeing the insurance sector posting a, a gain of 5.12 percent uh, year to date. Uh, and uh, looking at the other tables, uh, we saw consumer goods, the consumer goods and the industrial goods sector posting closing in the green. Uh, the industrial goods sector gained 1.70 percent. And again, this came on the back of the 355 business points rise in the share price of Danksem. Uh, leaving uh, Bois Cement and Wapco unchanged. Uh, uh, the gains in Danksem, the gains in Danksem uh, pushed the industrial goods sector into the green, while the consumer goods sector also uh, recorded the gain of uh, 23 basis points in yesterday's session. Uh, activity levels, when compared to the previous session, we saw a significant improvement. Uh, total volume traded uh, in, in improved to 220 million units. While value traded as well uh, increased to 4.2 billion naira. Uh, for the volume traded, it was uh, about 37 percent higher than where it closed in the previous session, Monday session. Uh, while value as well uh, saw a significant boost of 268 percent above where it also closed in the previous session. And for yesterday's session, uh, we saw Dank Sam, Notori, and Nestle uh, closing as the top uh, trader stocks by by value, uh, justifying our earlier point that the uh, positive close for yesterday was not broad based. Uh, we saw the market breadth closing in the red, still uh, remaining in the red, uh, to close at uh, 0 0.55 times. Uh, when looking at the gainers and decliners, we had a total of 11 stocks which settled in the green yesterday as against uh, 20 stocks which uh, settled south. So uh, uh, if we remove the gains of Dang Sem and MTN yesterday, Again, the market would have just maintained its uh, bearish run, and that, that is what we believe would happen in today's session. Uh, should we not see significant upward movements in uh, uh, large cap stocks, just like we saw yesterday, then we expect the market to return to uh, to the negative uh, territory because uh, a, a whole number of uh, indicator, indicators, uh, economical indicators, are not in favor of the equities market at the moment. We saw, we recently saw the uh, unemployment rate increasing, and the same thing happens to. Uh, inflation rate that was uh, that was released yesterday, and the outlook, as, as stated by our economic analysts, now is that inflation would continue to trend upward. So, given all these uh, scenarios, uh, we expect the the uh, equities markets to remain challenged in the in the in the short term, and uh, also looking at what is still happening in the fixed income market where yields are trading higher, uh, we still believe the market would uh, 
just uh, be pressured in the short term. Uh, that'll be it for us uh, this morning. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Emmanuel. We will now move to Omorige for fixed income and currencies. Good morning, Omorige. Good morning, Doze. Good morning, everybody. I'll be taking the update for fixed income. First, I'll start with the money market. Yesterday, we saw a significant improvement in system liquidity on the back of OMO credit of about 113.53 billion coming into the system yesterday. Supported by the OMO credit, we saw system opened around 195.5 billion positive yesterday as against the estimated opening figures of 100 billion on Monday. So the improved system liquidity yesterday caused money market rates to decline to trade between nine to 10% coming from the 12% levels that were recorded on Monday. So our expectation for today is that the money market will trade at higher levels, given that market players will make provisions for the OMO auction that will happen tomorrow. So moving on to FS markets, despite the marginal decline in our need turnover yesterday, we saw slight appreciation of the NERA in the and e window the parallel market remained flat to trade at 485 Naira to a dollar, while the and e window traded at the high of 412 Naira to a dollar, closing at 409.75 Naira to a dollar. The industry turnover dec decreased marginally to $32.33 million yesterday, coming from $50.67 million on Monday. So we expect NERA to trade at current levels. Moving on to TBS market. So the TBS market traded on a very bearish note yesterday as players trading sentiment of further rate increase at today's NTB auction. We saw a fast for the newly issued one year bill its 6.25 levels. In the OMO space, we saw sustained demand for the long dated OMO papers, particularly the March papers but there were virtually no offers on that end. The few offers that we saw were around 7.75% levels, while bids were around 8.25 levels. As earlier mentioned, there's an NTB auction today. The total amount on offer across the three usual tenants is 46 billion. The 91 days, we have just 1.5 billion on that end. So our expectation is that um, the stop rate we maintain given the mega amount on offer. So we expect it to close between 1.8% to 2%. We don't see any possible increase in rate on that hand. For the 182 days, the total amount on offer is 8.4 billion. Our expectation also is that rate we maintain. It closed at 3.5% in the last auction. We also expect it to close around that level today. Why the 364 days, the total amount on offer there is 37.2 billion. So our expectation here is that it will probably close between 6.5 to 7%. We believe um, it's not gonna go further than that because of the amount on offer. We just have 37.2 billion on offer. And given that there's a lot of demand in the market. We believe that a lot of people will throw in reasonable bids. So they'll probably be at those levels. People will not be very aggressive. So at the end of the day, the stop rate will fall between those range. So our expectation for today for the TBS market is that the NTB auction will take center stage. And so our anticipation is that there will be a quiet trading session in the TBS market with players likely to adopt the wait and see approach or just sit, stay on the sidelines waiting for the NTB auction result to give them clarity as regarding rate direction in the interim. So I'll conclude with the bonds market. So it was a missed trading session for the bonds market yesterday with headline inflation currently at 17.33% for February. So we saw a lot of um, bearish pressure on the long end, especially on the 2034s and 2045. Overall, investors just cautiously cherry picked offers across the mid to short end of the curve. So our expectation for today is that the sentiment that played out yesterday, that as a missed trading session, will also ensue today in the bonds market, as coupon inflows of about 62 billion 
eat the system. That will be all for fixed income. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Morgan. We will now move to Temple from Frontier Africa Reports for their updates. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, we're taking off from the eastern part of Africa, Kenya's petrol prices is rising and um, it's now at 122 shillings, 81 cents per litre. Um, power prices is also expected to, or power prices are also expected to rise across different regions. The same thing for uh, the petrol prices, which will be varying across the countries, Mombasa, Nairobi and other parts of the country, they are expected to have different. The reason for that is because of the new competition uh, the changes in the competition of the taxes, which is now has now resulted in higher pump prices and taxes, we understand now comprise about sixty percent of the uh, pump price for petrol, diesel, and diesel and kerosene. And um, in Uganda, the Auditor General uh, John Mwanga is warning that the debt level of that country is becoming unsustainable because the public debt as it stands now is at 41% of GDP. And the, we know that Uganda's um, debt increased by about 70% in the last three years. And I think he also mentioned that um, if they raise the more funds now, it could be hitting the 50% cap of uh, debt to GDP ratio, which the IMF has been warning them uh, to be cautious of. Tanzania, uh, their goods and the goods export reports for February was released uh, yesterday or thereabouts, and uh, golds uh, constituted the larger amounts of what was exported this period it was up from uh, was up rather by six hundred and sixty six million dollars to two point nine seven billion dollars in February alone, and it accounted for more than for more than forty nine percent of the non traditional exports um, in the period under review. Uh, last year alone, Tanzania recorded some 34% rise in uh, gold earnings. Uh, so this period for February, uh, it's generally due to uh, volume of uh, exports and of course price effects. We all know that uh, gold prices have risen in recent times and that's what fueled all of these earnings for them in Tanzania. Um, more interesting for us in the eastern part of Africa is that Abbas uh, Muchange, who is the Zambian ambassador, a former Zambian ambassador to Ethiopia, Brazil, uh, is now taking resuming office today. Uh, it's important because he was a, instrumental in the facilitation of uh, the AFCFTA. He is resuming as the AU um, Commissioner for Economic Development, Trade, Industry, and Mining. He was actually voted in the, 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 the last meet, the uh, last general meeting in Western part of Africa. Not so much. We already know what the headlines look like. Uh, there's the USSD charges from Central Bank, WCO, the G, uh, CBN, and so Mayfieldly are in talks of uh, uh, vaccine support. And in Congo, they're looking to uh, they spent some $182 million of the five-year local bonds to repay uh, some debts and, of course, fund some projects. In South Africa, Anglo-American PLC issues two news, uh, two senior notes worth $1 billion, and it's evenly split, split rather, across um, 2028 and 2031 tenors. Uh, it was raised uh, by the uh, subsidiary, the Anglo-American uh, for them, and it is guaranteed by the parent company. Um, then uh, you have shop rights earnings. The sales was up by 4.7%. They've created more than 4,000 jobs in six months, and they have also now concluded the sale of their interest in, in the Nigerian units. I guess that's the PR for that will be coming out any moment from now. SCOM CEO is warning that um, there will be more power shortfall in South Africa around 4,000 megawatts, uh, rise again as the economic growth, that's what he's pegging it on. He's also saying that um, he's asking the public to expect some five more years of load shedding in that country. While in Namibia, uh, Moody's is expecting the debt to hit 74% of GDP this year. Finally, is uh, Northern African headlines where Rascom 
uh, the blue chip construction company there has reported some 22% decline in profits. Uh, Saudi Shabatli is also looking to invest some 39.3 billion Egyptian pounds in that country in Egypt. Uh, they had over the last 15 years invested some 2 billion uh, dollars. Uh, but this time they are looking to bring some about $40 billion into this uh, country for way of investment. They actually met with the prime minister yesterday to have this meeting. Finally, is the uh, FRA, the Financial Regulatory Authority for Egypt, that uh, has uh, given a go-ahead to Mohandis Insurance to uh, implement its uh, capital raising of, I uh, think, $235 million, $235 million Egyptian pounds. Uh, that will be increasing from $187 million uh, Egyptian pounds. The capital will be distributed on 19 million shares or two pounds 50, pen, 50 pence a dollar each. Those are our headlines from Fonte Africa reports. Thank you for listening. Thank you very much. We have now come to the question and answer portion of the meeting. If you would like to speak, you can raise your hand or you may use the comment function and we will treat your question. I see I, Daisy has his hand up. I will now allow you to talk and you can unmute yourself. You can go ahead and speak. Thank you. Hello, Ayodhiji, you can ask your question. Okay, it would appear we seem to be having technical issues with him. I'll, if, I'll give another couple of seconds. Okay. Hello, Ayodhiji, if you can hear me, you can go ahead and ask your question. I see um, we still seem to be having issues with him. Um, it would appear that there are no other questions. If over the course of the day you do have any questions for us, do not hesitate to reach out and send an email to research at vitiva.com and we will get back to you. On behalf of everyone at Vitiva and our media partners at Frontier Africa Reports, um, yeah, sorry, sorry guys. Um, on behalf of everyone at Vitiva and our media partners at Frontier Africa Reports, we would like to thank you all for joining us today. We continue to encourage everyone to remain safe, and we look forward to having you join us again tomorrow at 8.30. We hope everyone has a good day. Goodbye.